Okay, let's go ahead and subtract the fractions. Now, another way to state this problem is, is we're going to find the difference between these two fractions, and this is going to be a lot of fun. One, we are doing math. Two, we're dealing with fractions, which is awesome. And three, we're not going to be using a calculator. So this is going to be a very good time. Now, uh, some of you might be saying, what do you mean calculator? I always uh, use a calculator when I do math. Well, I get it. I mean, a calculator is a great tool, but what happens if you don't have your calculator? Matter of fact, uh, think about those uh, math students maybe 50 years ago, uh, 60, 70, 80 years ago, when there was no personal calculators around. They just had to use that calculator in between their e uh, ears, that supercomputer that we all have. So we want to go ahead and put that calculator away because it's important that we understand the process to actually uh, solve this problem because the procedure or the concepts um, plays a role in algebra, okay? And you can't really do algebra with your calculator. Calculator is great for numeric values, but what happens when you're dealing with uh, variables, things like X, Y, Z? Well, your calculator becomes, you know, not as useful. Now, I do have a bit of a hint here for you. We are going to need to find the LCD. So uh, there's a couple different ways we could do this problem, but I'm going to just kind of focus on uh, uh, finding the LCD so you can kind of really uh, firmly understand what that uh, is. Now, um, again, I'm going to speak in general terms here because I want to give you an opportunity to solve this problem on your own. So if you know the answer to this without, of course, a calculator, go ahead and do the problem, put your answer into the comments section. And then as a bonus, I want you to tell me what the LCD stands for, but even better yet. Okay, let's just see how well you understand fractions. Tell me what the LCD is and how you find the LCD, okay? How would you kind of like, if you had to tutor someone in fractions and say, hey, this is what the LCD is and here's a little procedure on how to find it. If you could do all that, well, listen, uh, you may not even be able to um, need to watch this video because that means that you know this stuff pretty well. But anyways, I'm gonna show you the answer to this problem in just one second and then we're gonna walk through step-by-step step exactly how to find the LCD and find the difference between these two fractions. Okay, but uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I love to teach math. It's my passion. I can tell you right now, all of you could do excellent in mathematics. Now, some of you are gonna be math superstars because you love math that much, but those of you out there that struggle in math, think that, oh, you can't learn math or you, you just can't, you know, uh, succeed in math. That's not the case, okay? What you need is encouragement, a desire to learn math, but most importantly, you need access to great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need uh, help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying for a very important test, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, something with uh, mathematics as part of the exam, or maybe you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses uh, that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description of this video, but you should be taking your own awesome math notes. If your notes are terrible, start improving this and you'll see everything start improving in terms of mathematics. And uh, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we're gonna take it nice and slow. A lot of you um, are gonna look at this problem and say, oh, this is super easy. Why are you uh, boring me with this uh, Mr. YouTube math man? Give me something really challenging. Well, listen, a lot of people think they know basic math far better than they actually do. Okay, so the uh, people that look at this problem go, oh, here's a problem, da, 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 and here is my answer. Guess what? Probably 50% of the time, they're gonna have the wrong answer. So always respect any math problem you're gonna do. And let's take a look at the answer, and then we're gonna go ahead and get into exactly how to do this problem. All right, so we have 9 sixteenths minus 3 over 20 or 3 twentieths. The answer is 33 over 80. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, I must definitely give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%. And let's go ahead and give you some stars here so you can have an extra special day. Nice job, okay? So, again, uh, there is, well, there's primarily one way that most people do 
fraction problems when it comes to subtracting and adding fraction problems. You're thinking about the LCD, and that's good. Now, you don't need the LCD all the time, okay? Of course, I'm going to explain this in a second, but there's a nice little kind of shortcut uh, that you can also take when you're adding and subtracting fractions. If you want to know about this great little hack, and you definitely want to know about that, check out some more. Uh, check out my additional videos on uh, fractions on my YouTube channel. Uh, or if you really, really want to learn fractions with me, I would suggest two courses in my math help program. One, my math foundations course. It's a nice little mini course for basic math review to include fractions or my pre-algebra course. So again, if this video is not enough and you want to learn more, uh, those are some suggestions. But let's go ahead and get into it right now. All right, so here's the problem, 916 minus 3 over 20, 3 twentieths. So when we're talking about fractions, let's talk about the different operations that you can face with fractions. Okay, so we can multiply fractions, we can divide fractions. These uh, operations, when we have two fractions and we're multiplying or dividing, this has nothing to do with the LCD, okay? It has nothing to do with the LCD. Matter of fact, this is quite easy uh, to do these operations. But when we're adding and subtracting fractions, this is when we have to be thinking about the lowest common denominator. Now, sometimes we don't need the LCD, but typically students, when they struggle with fractions, it's because they are confused with the lowest common denominator and they just get really scared of fractions and typically fractions get a bad reputation or you know people don't like fractions it's like you know uh, i hate fractions i don't want to do fractions listen i get it but once you understand this and you uh, really have a mastery over it, you're like oh no i totally understand it then you know it's not going to be so bad so let's go ahead and figure this out all right so and when it comes to fractions, again, adding and subtracting fractions, let's just look at two fractions here. So when we have a fraction like 9 over 16 or 3 over 20, we have two numbers, right, that basically make up a fraction. We have a top number and a bottom number. That top number is called the numerator. The bottom number is called the denominator. So here, uh, in this case, the numerator is 9, the denominator is 16. Here, the, numer the numerator is 9, and the denominator is 16. So here we have two fractions, a numerator and a denominator, and we want to add another fraction that has a numerator and denominator. So the deal is, you, when it comes to adding and subtracting fractions, okay, it's basically the same uh, procedure. The bottom number, i.e. the denominators, must be the same number. Okay, so you could see in this situation, they are not the same. So we're going to have to kind of fix this up. But let's take a look at a situation uh, where the um, numbers are the same, when we have the same denominator. Now, again, when the uh, bottom numbers or the denominators are not the same, that's when you need to be thinking LCD. And a lot of you, um, you know, if I give you nice easy numbers like one-third plus one-fifth, uh, you could tell me the LCD. As a matter of fact, a lot of you might, might be saying, oh, what's the LCD? Uh, the LCD is 15. Look, I know the LCD. It's super easy. I'm like, oh, very good, very impressive. But what about these numbers? What if I had 1 over 508 and uh, let's say 1 over 36? What's the LCD? Well, you know, this is where we get these expressions, right? People are like, well, okay, listen, I only want to do math when the problems are nice and easy. It doesn't work that way, but this is not that difficult. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so when we do have the, a, um, uh, the, uh, the fractions are set up with the denominators being the same, like in this particular situation, there's no need for the LCD. Now, let me just go ahead and just tell you what the LCD stands for, okay? So uh, we're going to get into this um, in detail, but this stands for the lowest common denominator. So CD right here, CD is what? Common denominator. The denominators have something in common. What would they have in common? Maybe they're the exact same number, right? So when you're looking for the LCD, we want to find the lowest number that uh, the denominators can be in common with, i.e. the same. So these uh, fractions right here, have common denominators, right? In other words, the denominators are already the same. So this fraction problem is already set up uh, to uh, solve. Okay, it's like going to be so, so easy to do this. So notice that um, 
Addition and subtraction work the same way. It's the same procedure. So uh, what you need to do is you just keep the denominator. So the, in this case, it's 5. And then we're going to perform this operation with the numerators. We're going to take this numerator and we're going to subtract it from that numerator. It's very, very easy. We're just going to go ahead and do this operation. Uh, this will uh, um, be our numerator. So we have 3 minus 1 is 2 or 2 fifths. And there you go. Okay, so this is we're going to have to get to this stage and do this, uh, but we can't do this part in, in, the, in this particular problem yet because the denominators are not the same. But as soon as we get those denominators the same, we're basically going to do this step. Okay, all right. So now that you kind of see the big picture, let's go ahead and figure out how to find the lowest common denominator. Now, stylistically. Some of you might write fractions this way with a little angle fraction bar. Perfectly fine to write a fraction like this. Uh, but this is equivalent to uh, writing a fraction with a nice little horizontal uh, fraction bar like so. Me personally, uh, you're better off writing uh, more. I like to write fractions this way. But you also see fractions written this way as well, especially like if you're you know, working with, let's say, carpentry or, or you're using a ruler. This is a pretty common. Both are perfectly fine. I'm not trying to make any uh, judgments here on it. But uh, I would suggest uh, writing fractions or getting used to writing fractions as horizontal fraction bar like this because this is uh, basically the way we do this in algebra. Okay, We don't really use this notation much we kind of uh, uh, stylistically write fractions this way but they mean the same thing so let's go ahead and rewrite the fractions this way okay and again i'm looking at the problem i'm saying all right these do not have uh, the same number right so we're going to have to figure out what number okay does 16 and 20 have in common all right well 16 and 20 have a multiple numbers. Matter of fact, they have infinite numbers in common. Now, what we're looking for are multiples. Now, I'm just kind of explaining this. This is not the procedure. But what says we have 16 times 1 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Okay. And then we have 20 times 2 is 40. 20 times 3 is uh, 60, etc. These are what we call multiples. Okay. And I can go on with 16, 16 times 3, 16 times 4, etc. These are multiples. So the lowest common denominator is when we have a common multiple. All right. So uh, if you you know you don't really understand this, that's you know totally you know I, I get this because most students don't truly understand the LCD. Another way to think of the LCD. Let's kind of go back here. Uh, one third plus one fifth, and we know that the LCD lowest common denominator is 15. I'm assuming most of you out there do know this because this is a pretty easy problem. Another way to think of this as uh, the LCD as it's the lowest number that both these numbers divide into evenly. Okay, so three and five they divide into 30. Okay, so uh, you could divide um, uh, 30 by 3, and you could divide 30 by 5, no problem. But this is not the lowest number that you could divide um, these two numbers into. 15 is the lowest number. So that's another way to kind of conceptually think of the LCD. Okay, The LCD is actually the lowest common multiple. Okay, uh, Its cousin, uh, the cousin of the LCD, is the LCM, lowest common multiple of these numbers down here um, in the denominator, right? So, you know, this is very important stuff because in algebra, when you're dealing with fractions with variables, which are called rational expressions, you have to have a real strong understanding of multiples and LCD, etc. So, you know, you're better off learning this right now with arithmetic, and you can transfer this knowledge over when you study algebra. Okay, so let's get into this. All right, so we want to find the LCD. We want to find uh, the lowest common multiple both of these numbers um, go into, or another way to think about it, is what is the lowest number that both of these numbers can go into? Well, we can find that. That is called the lowest common denominator. So what we need to do is find the prime factors of each of these denominators. Okay, so we're going to have to do some work here. Not that difficult of work. We're going to have to find the prime factors of this number and this number, and then Whatever prime factors we have between uh, this number and this number, and by the way, if we had other denominators, um, there are all your denominators, all the prime factors. We have to have each unique prime factor represented 
in our LCD. So what we're going to do is we're going to find each prime factor, okay, unique prime factor, and then we're going to multiply all those unique prime factors together. The product of all those unique prime factors will be the LCD. Now, this may seem a little bit confusing, you know, the way I explain it. I think when you see this in action, it will be uh, much, much more understandable, if that's even grammatically correct the way I said that. But let's move on, okay? You don't want to learn English from me. Uh, math is my specialty. <laughs> I am terrible at spelling. My, um, just as a side note, my father had dyslexia. And somebody out there might be, you know, if you are struggling with some sort of learning disorder, dyslexia, or some other something like that, don't let that stop you learning math or being successful at learning anything. You just have to find ways to modify those different things. But let's move on. Okay, so 916 minus 320s. Okay, so again, we're going to need the LCD, which means we need to uh, find the prime factors of the respective denominators. And the easiest way to find the prime factor is uh, prime factors of numbers is to build a factor tree. Okay, so if you've never seen a factor tree, this is what they look like. Super easy. Let me show you. Let's just focus in here on 16, and then I'll go through 20, and then we'll talk about the rest of this. So what you want to do is figure out uh, two numbers that uh, uh, basically two factors of 16 other than 1 and 16. Now you could go, oh, 16 is 4 times 4. That's perfectly fine. You could start that way. Uh, doesn't make a difference how you start your factors. In other words, like 20, I could go 2 times 10 or 4 times 5. Your final answers will be the same. Okay, your factor, the way you factored out your, um, your way your factor tree looks might look different than, say, this, but your final answer will be the same. So don't worry about that. So here we go. So 16 uh, is 8 times 2. Now, these are factors of 18. So you have to look at the factors and you have to ask yourself, um, do we have any prime factors? Well, 2 is a prime number. So what you want to do is circle 2. 8 is not a prime number. Okay? In other words, I could factor this down further. So let's go ahead and factor uh, 8 further. So that would be 4 times 2. And look, oh, we have another prime factor here. So circle that. And so we look at each factor. And we keep factoring each factor that can be factored. So 4 can be factored as 2 times 2. So we're going to circle all the prime factors. So 16 is going to be equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. All right, these are the prime factors of 16. But you always want to express um, uh, prime factors if you have more than one as a power. It's very, very important. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. So 16 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 2 to the fourth power. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at 20. So 20 is 2 times 10. 2 is pro, uh, prime, 10 is not, so we continue to factor. So 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5, and these numbers are prime. So 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times this 5. All right, and again, we can write 2 times 2 as 2 squared, all right? So this is really, uh, really, really important. And then we have 5. Okay, so we have the prime factors of all the numbers um, in the denominators. In this case, we only have two numbers. We're only adding two or subtracting two numbers, but we had, if we were subtracting or adding three fractions, you could have another number over here, let's say it was 70, and you would do the same thing as well, okay? But here is a prime factor, okay? Uh, here, two to the squared is another prime factor, and five is another prime factor, okay? Now this right here, this number, uh, I'm sorry, not 2 to the, um, I don't know if I said 2 to the square, 2 to the 4th uh, right here is a prime factor, 2 squared and uh, 5. Okay, so now let's go ahead and build our LCD. So this is where, if you don't follow this little procedure I'm telling you, you can get uh, confused in terms of your final answer. So your lowest common denominator is going to be your prime factors time your prime time, uh, your uh, other prime factors when it comes to um, the factors of the numbers and the denominator. So let's go ahead and uh, do the obvious one. Five is a prime factor. So we're going to need a prime, uh, I'm sorry, five represented in our LCD. Okay, that is a prime factor. So now we have two to the fourth and two squared. So the question is, well, two is certainly a prime factor. So should we write two? Okay, uh, well, or 
uh, she'll be right 2 to the 4th and then another 2 squared. Which is correct? What should we do here? Because we have to represent 2. Well, here is what you do, okay? All right, so here, this is 2 to the 4th, and here is 2 uh, to the 2nd power. The deal is, um, when you're building out your LCD, you always take the highest power of the number, okay? So we need a 2 represented, but this is 2 to the 4th, this is 2 squared. You always take the highest power, so that's 2 to the 4th, and then we don't have to worry about that 2 to the squared, or 2 to the 2nd power, 2 squared. So this is the LCD, okay? So what does this mean? Well, uh, the LCD, the lowest common denominator, is going to be 5 times 2 to the 4th power. And what is that equal to? Well, let's go ahead and figure this out now. So the LCD is 2 to the 4th times 5. Remember, 2 to the 4th is 16. That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So let's see here. Uh, yeah, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. <laughs> when I'm saying this, I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly. So sometimes I have to stop myself. All right, so 2 to the 4th is 16. 16 times 5 is 80. Okay, so now a lot of you might have come up with this answer. You're like, oh, I know it was 80. You know, I didn't need to listen to you ramble for five minutes explaining this. But again, all right, what if I made the denominators like crazy? What if I made it like 1608 and uh, 20,182? OK, if these were your denominator, I could tell you right now, you would not be a happy camper. You might be looking like this. You'd be like, OK, OK, you made your point. Listen, when it comes to easy numbers, sometimes when you are you, thinking about the LCD, we don't even know why we know the LCD. We're just like, it's this. I just know it's this is the answer. OK, but we need a procedure. Right. And you need to have a good understanding of what the LCD is. So there you go. So that's the lowest common denominator. It is 80. Okay, so what does this mean now? Well, let me show you, okay? This is the next phase of doing this problem. So some of you out there are thinking to yourself, this is kind of a lot of work to do this problem. Well, yeah, you know, when you truly want to understand it, I don't want to say it's a lot of work, but there is a lot of concepts that we need to make sure we understand. So we have two fractions here. The denominators are not the same. So we're going to uh, write a new, brand new denominator for both of these fractions, and that brand new denominator is going to be 80. So how do we do that? Well, easy. We need to just rewrite these fractions differently. For example, if I had the fraction 1 half, right, and I said, hey, uh, let's make up a new fraction um, with a new denominator that's still equal to this fraction. Well, I could write 5 over 10. I could write 3 over 6. I could write 4 over 8. I could write 7 over 14. doesn't make a difference. All of these fractions right here are equivalent to 1 half. Uh, the only deal is, is they have different denominators, okay? So you can rewrite a fraction with a brand new denominator. You just have to adjust the numerator, okay? So it's this top number we're going to have to make some adjustments to uh, if we want the bottom number, the denominator, to be 80. So let's go ahead and figure out how to do that right now. Okay, so, of course, we want to make... Uh, uh, the denominator 80. Okay, so let's take a look at our fractions right here. Let's focus in on this one first. So how do I make a 16 into an 80? Easy, just multiply it by 5. 16 times 5 is 80. If I multiply the denominator here by 5, i got to multiply the numerator by 5. That's how we adjust this fraction or rewrite this fraction such that it has a denominator of 80. So 5 times 9 is 45. So 45 over 80 is the new and improved fraction uh, with this denominator that we want, okay? 45 over 80. If I said, hey, reduce or simplify this fraction, you would go back and reduce it that way. Okay, so how do we turn a 60 into an 80? Easy, multiply by 4. So we have to multiply that numerator by 4, so that would be 12. Okay, so we have 12 over 80. So this fraction now right here is equivalent to 12 over 80. And now we are ready to finish up this problem. Finally, finally, we're gonna, uh, we have two fractions with the same denominator. So this is going to be easy. All we need to do is keep one of those denominators, that's 80, and go ahead and find the difference of the uh, numerator. So that'd be 45 minus 12 right there. So 45 minus 12 is 33 over 80. And of course, you always want to make sure that you have a fully simplified fraction, but this is as far as you can go. You can't reduce this uh, any further. And that is it. 
So uh, at least in my videos, okay, if you're you're you know for new to uh, my channel or if you're new to my videos, what I do is I take one problem, okay, and I break things down like super you know clear and understand. At least I try, okay. The whole point of doing that is so you can have a comprehension of what's going on. You know, if I just did a bunch of math problems, like oh, here, I want to uh, do a lot of problems all day long. But if you don't really uh, truly understand what I'm doing, you might pick up the pattern, but that's not the same. You might be like basically duplicate the pattern, but that's not the same as truly synthesizing this material, truly comprehending this. You know, I've been doing this for a long, 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 long time because I love teaching mathematics, but I found out a long time ago that the obvious best way to teach math is to really focus on the concepts, you know, build your skills up, not just to say, hey, here's how you do this problem, da, 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 you know, if that's the way you're approaching mathematics, you're probably struggling, okay? So take a deep breath, learn one skill at a time, but once you learn how to do one problem, all the other problems become much, much uh, more attainable, much easier. Yeah, you know, you might have more difficult problems, even if I gave you more, um, uh, digits, you know, in terms of the denominator here, you would just simply do the work. It, it, you know, a lot of these more challenging problems are more work, but at least you're not going to be lost. Okay, so if you need additional help with fractions, again, uh, three suggestions. One, I have ton more, uh, tons of uh, videos on my YouTube channel on fractions. Uh, that's my first recommendation. Second thing is my Math Foundation course or my pre-algebra course. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.